out for ourselves exactly what price does a Canadian boxer pay for following the rainbow across the border. We join the story of 22-year-old Scotty Olson of Edmonton just after he represented Canada in the 1988 Olympics, where he lost in the quarterfinals. Hi, my name is Scotty Olson. I'm from Filter Club. I was selling vacuums uh, after the Olympics all the way up to the summer of 1989. You just give the, the one and a quarter of a turn, and it slides nicely underneath. Nothing was really happening professionally in Canada, so I, I drove down uh, to Vegas. No air conditioning. I dressed up in my best suit. I brought a videotape of myself, all my best knockouts in the amateurs, and I tried to sell myself. This little dwarf walks in and uh, he says he wants to be a fighter and all that. And at first I thought it was a joke, you know. And I said, you know, get out of here. Then he, then he pulls out a scrapbook and he shows me all these clippings. And he was very, very polite. He was such a nice person that. I started feeling terrible. I got those already abused this kid on tease. And uh, a guy named Mouse Strauss, Bruce Mouse Strauss, is sitting around and he says, Did, was that kid from Edmonton? I used to fight Edmonton. They said, that's a great fight town. I love it up there. He says, this kid's from Edmonton. He can be a big attraction there. And we brought him back in here and said, okay, let's sit down and talk, you know. And we started hatching out plans where he would live here. He trained with uh, Sandoval, who's a former Bantamweight champion, and uh, uh, Mouse would manage him, and we'd start promoting him, and that's, that's actually what happened. I worked for Top Rank for 11 years, and I've been here in the Vegas office for three years. I can't think of another walk-on. I'm telling you, I chase guys out of here. I like him more as a person than as a fighter, and considering how highly I hold him in regard as a boxer, that says a lot. He's, he's a terrific guy. They took me in. They're like a family to me. I'm the person too. That's yeah. how I feel about him. He's like a, the, the whole office staff. He's like our adopted son. Yeah. One of the things that impressed us about Scotty Olson was his acute awareness of the hardcore business side of boxing. Boxing uh, professionals is, is entertainment. Promotional companies will look for in a fighter would be does he have uh, crowd pleasing potential? His ability to to turn on the crowd. Whether he can get fans to come out when he has a fight. There's a lot of fighters in Canada who are excellent fighters. Same here in the United States, all over the world. But there's only a select few that really have the potential to be marketed and and, and brought along well and made into an attraction to for a certain company to make money. He pulls in fans here. They love them on television. The announcers love them. We get fan mail for them. And not many guys, you know, have that kind of popularity. I think those things are are, are certain aspects that Top Rank is really planning on cashing in on. And um, I hope to bring not only myself, but Top Rank, a lot of exposure uh, through, through uh, what I can do in my career. Scotty is like uh, a member of the family. And so he's been around us enough to really absorb what this business is about. He's a very smart young man. So how much does a boxer like Scotty actually make at this stage in his career? Well, um, money is not something I, I really get into very often. When asked, he was reluctant to talk about it. But eventually, he came around. I'm fighting, you know, once a, once a month. Um, for, for 15 months now, I'm making a, a, you know, minimum, I'm making 5000 for my fights. All my accommodations, uh, uh, food and things like that are taken care of for me. The money that I make <clears throat> for my fights, I get paid immediately after. And that money uh, is divided among <clears throat> Mouse, Richie and myself. And we, we divide it all, and I get my percentage, and, uh, you know, that goes in my pocket. And I send some home back to my mom and stuff like that. The standard fee for a trainer is 10% of his fighter's purse. The manager usually gets 33%. So out of a $5,000 purse, Scotty would receive about $2,800 a month. But they don't know that I would fight for free. Yeah, I love fighting so much, I'd fight for free, but they want to pay me for doing something that I really love to do. And uh, I think it's really humorous because to 
actually be earning a living and getting paid for a job that you love to do. A lot of people aren't in that position. But Scott Olson has tremendous potential for much bigger paydays in the not too distant future. After May 23rd, assuming everything goes well, we're going to uh, to shut them down and see how the negotiations are going for the Dave McCauley title fight. Scotty is very, very close to being matched uh, for the uh, overall title against uh, Dave McCauley of Ireland. Uh, and we think that's a fight that he'll be able to win. Then if all goes well, the next major step in his career would be another world title fight with Michael Carvajal from Phoenix, Arizona. In their first amateur encounter back in 1987, Olsen beat Carvajal. But then, in the 1988 Olympic Games, it was Michael Carvajal who ended Scott Olsen's dreams of an Olympic medal. Carvajal is also represented by top rank. The rumors are, if these two meet in a world title fight, it could be the first million dollar purse in flyweight history. I think that uh, each guy wants to fight the other guy when the time is propitious. That means when each of them could be paid a very substantial purse. Uh, then the time for that fight that will arrive. I don't want to see these kids fight each other as a friend of both guys, but as a matchmaker, it's my job to try and uh, elevate both guys to the point where that fight makes a lot of sense for them to fight. But now look at them work. Since they are professional fighters, and that's what they do, they get paid to hit other guys, then the only thing I can do to help them out is to say, boys, you're going to fight, but let's try and make you as much money as we can. And when it's over, let's all still be friends. I'm just hoping that through my success I can bring um, even more excitement and just create more of a demand for, for um, fighters to have opportunities in Canada.